O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We welcome you today as we celebrate this Wednesday of Ordinary Time. Uh, there was new COVID regulations by the diocese yesterday. In terms of mass use, assuming fully vaccinated, it's totally up to you what you want to do. They asked us to uh, wear a mask when distributing communion, but don't wear a mask for me. So I'll wear a mask when I distribute communion, but coming in and out of church when you're in the pews, do what you feel comfortable, but a fully vaccinated, no need to wear a mask. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, consider this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You are being enriched in every way for all generosity, which through us produces thanksgiving to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Blessed the man who fears the Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners, so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that you may not appear to others to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you probably growing up would, would hear the, the expression, you reap what you sow. I mean, I was told that by my parents over and over again. It comes directly from our first reading today that when we sow goodness, we reap goodness. So think in your own life. What would you like? I think all of us would love to be loved more, wouldn't we? We'd all love people to love us more. We'd love our family to love us more. So what does God say there? Reap seeds or sow seeds of love in your family so that the reward that will come back is greater love in the family. I think everybody wants people to be kind to us. I want people to be kind to me. I think that's kind of a universal thing. So what does our first reading say? Sow seeds of kindness. Be kind to others, and it'll be replicated back to you in great number. I think all of us want people to understand us, to be able to know where we're coming from. So we're told today to, re to sow seeds of, of understanding, where we offer a wisdom, give people some patience, give some people some legroom so that they can re respond back to us. And, and in reality, people will take an attentive ear to understand us as well. That's a recipe for right living that we receive directly from the scriptures. And I think our gospel is kind of so pertinent for it. The gospel that we prayed is from Matthew's gospel, chapter 6. But every Ash Wednesday... When we begin a season of change, we hear this gospel with the three pillars of Lenten observance, which are fasting, almsgiving, and prayer. And when Ash Wednesday comes, think about that day. You're thinking, how do I put the best foot forward into the Lenten season? I think we hear that gospel today with our first reading because we're at the beginning of summer. So we're starting this season in just another week's time and we want to put our best foot forward. And this time we're told by sowing seeds. So think in your own life, what do you long for? Greater love, greater kindness, greater forgiveness, greater understanding, greater wisdom, greater friendships, greater you know, respect between neighbors and our, and our neighborhood. There's so many different things that we all long for. And today, today, God gives us a challenge. Sow seeds. Sow seeds of friendship. Sow seeds of love. Sow seeds of understanding. Sow seeds of forgiveness. And he tells us directly in our gospel that if we do it in secret, we don't do it lording over others, we let no one know our agenda, God will repay us. He'll repay us with bountiful fruit of love, of understanding, of forgiveness. The two go hand in hand, our gospel and our, our first reading. 
So today we begin a new part of our own lives. We're early on in this season. We're at the end of spring, almost the beginning on the cusp of summer. Today's the day to sow some seeds. May we yield a bountiful harvest by what we sow. Please rise now for the intercessions. Knowing that God cannot be outdone in generosity, which knows no bounds or limits, we offer our needs to the Father. For all members of the church, that we may all grow in an awareness and understand God's challenge and take it on, that the Holy Spirit may empower us to sow those seeds in offering praise and thanksgiving to God and then yielding a bountiful harvest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ways in which we're leaders in our own families, our neighborhoods, our schools, our workplaces, for civic and government leaders as well, may all of us be enlightened by God to seek always the common good, we pray to the Lord. For all who experience physical or spiritual poverty, we pray in a special way for our parasyclists, all those in need of our prayers. Pray in a special way for Melissa Peace Corps, who undergoes surgery today. We pray for all those that undergo surgery, are in, in hospitals and nursing homes and rehab centers. May their needs all be met through the abundant generosity of the Father. And may God send his healing touch to them through his grace and also through the wisdom of the doctors tapping into that spirit. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the grace we receive in this Eucharist help us to grow ever deeper in our faith and in our desire for the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Our summer program for our faith formation begins in just a little bit over a week's time. And you can see we have the schedules out for next year. May our faith formation program sow some seeds to yield a bountiful harvest of faith in the lives of our youth, of our community, and our grandchildren, and our nieces and nephews, in our friends, family, all the youth of our diocese, especially at our parish, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, today we remember in a special way, Teresa Sobin. For Teresa and all the faithful departed, may they soon delight with the angels and saints in the glory of God's heavenly kingdom, and may we meet them again we pray to the Lord. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. And we make these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear and answer the prayers we offer today, not as we deserve, but through your abundant grace. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Thank you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all, his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food, 
and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation, and having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice, we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son of the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, holy fathers, we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you love through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. 
Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. As a reminder, after distributing communion in the sanctuary area, I'll bring communion to you. There is no need to wear a mask for me, although I will have a mask on.
Holy Father, keep in your name those you have given me, that they may be one as we are one, says the Lord. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. It's a reminder today after Mass, we pray the glorious mysteries of the Rosary if you'd like to stay with us. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.